<laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to my show, Friday PM. My name is Luigi Scarcelli. Uh, I've got a great group here with me. Uh, this is uh, the folks from the Portland Theater Festival. Uh, you can just tell us uh, your names and about the festival. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Dave Register. I'm the founder and the artistic director of the Portland Theater Festival, which is a brand new summer season of live professional theater uh, situated here in the heart of downtown Portland. Yeah, great. Uh, Ashanti Williams. I play the part of Moses. I lived in Biddeford seven years now from Inglewood, New Jersey. Yeah, pleasure being here. Uh, my name is Jay Mack. I play the part of Kitsch, and I have lived in Portland for about two years from Trenton, New Jersey. I should add that these guys are, are uh, the two leads of our current festival show, which is called Passover by Antoinette Nwandu, which is playing currently this weekend and next weekend at Mayo Street Arts down in East Bayside. Yeah. So we're, uh, we had a show that just closed. Um, Passover is now open. And then we have a third show called Pony, written by a guy named Sylvan Oswald, that opens a little bit later this month and runs right up until Labor Day. You're Ashanti, correct, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Ashanti Williams. I'm from uh, Inglewood, New Jersey. Okay. And uh, I've been living up here for seven years. And it, I mean, Portland has a beautiful the theater scene. So, you know, I had to just go and take the opportunities, any opportunities I had. And this is one of, if not the best opportunity I've had so far, especially with the reception we've been getting. So this is a pleasure. I, I love it. You know, I went to uh, Circle in the Square in New York and did a lot of stuff with the Metropolitan Opera House. So to come up here and have this type of work up here also in Maine, which has a stigma for not being as theatrical, as artistic as, you know, these other um, cities. It's, I mean, we're killing the myth right now with plays like this. And they're all over. Man, yeah. So yeah. So uh, were you doing opera at one point? Or are you a singer? Also, I was a or? supernumerary. No, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm Aria. I am not. No, I was a <laughs> supernumerary. So a lot of the fighting things like that. That's oh, what okay. I did up on stage. Yeah, with like B. H. Barry and Brad Lemons, those types. You mean like so stage fighting? Yeah, yeah. yeah stage combat. Okay. A lot of stage combat, That's which cool. I love. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, what are those more modern plays that do stage fighting, or is that? Um, modern. There's modern. some older stuff we did, like um, Girl of the Golden West, um, okay. uh, Atello we've done. We've done a lot of, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, just yeah. Uh, ebb and flow of new and older stuff. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, like uh, in the play that I just saw, Passover, you guys had a few of that. It was a very physical play. Uh, it was definitely a lot of moving around. You guys just weren't sitting at a, at a desk. We're going to show a few still photos from the place so you guys can get an idea a little bit of it. Before we go too much further, where can they get tickets to that? Let's make sure we get that out to everybody. Yeah, yeah so um, we're, the show is called Passover. It's written by a woman named Antoinette Nwandu. Um, it's running uh, this coming, well, uh, actually, so this weekend, yep. tonight, tomorrow, Sunday. And then next weekend, Thursday through Sunday. Okay. Uh, and you can get tickets at PortlandTheaterFestival.org. Portland Theater. .org. Portland and that's theater, T H E A T E R. Okay. R E. But if you Google Portland Theater Festival, <laughs> should pop up. And we'll put that down at the bottom of the screen as well. Yeah. And uh, so this will be playing from, because the show sometimes plays at different times. You guys are August, probably it was like uh, 6th or 7th, all the way through to. Fourth uh, to the twenty-first. Fourth to the twenty-first with this play itself, mm -hmm. and then there's going to be another play after that called Pony, uh, and then there was a play before which was really interesting as well. Uh, but tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, Jay, as well. Oh uh, well, uh, my name is Jay Jay yeah. Mack. Uh, okay. I'm also from Jersey. I'm from Trenton, New Jersey. Okay. Um, I, I moved up to Portland about two years ago. Yeah. Uh, I um, came. Sort of in, I, I moved up during the pandemic. Um, pretty much, I had like just finished up college and I was working a couple jobs just to be able to have money because I was extremely broke in college. Right. <laughs> um, I was working at a hospital and a, and a restaurant and I got laid off from both because of the pandemic. Um, and so I was just home and my dad was looking at me like, <laughs> you don't have a job when you're in my house, so right, right. <laughs> so I was like, all right, it's time to go. So um, uh, my girlfriend was already living up here, and like I already loved the area. I, I loved how um, how green it was. I, I loved the the people seemed so nice, and I and I heard that that the art scene up here was was great when it came to uh, theater and when it came to music. So I was like, oh, I mean, like why not you know move up here for a little bit? And then as soon as I moved up here, somebody who I went to college with actually, I, I went to uh, Syracuse for acting. 
Um, I connected with uh, Dave through a friend of mine from college. Uh, his name's Ad Adam Coy. And uh, through Dave, honestly, I mean, like I've gotten all of my acting uh, in Portland that I've that I've had since right. like in the past like two years. Not he connected. I mean, uh, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, like he connected me with like different like directors out here who like I ended up working for different people. Um, I've worked on a movie with Dave. I've done a couple of other projects and. Uh, yeah, and then, and then now we're in this, which, I mean, like Ashanti said, is probably my favorite project that I've done since I've been up here, and it's been an absolute pleasure to be involved in this project. Yeah, it was 90 minutes. There was no intermission. I mean, it was just all energy. There was a third man. Let's make sure to give him credit, too. What was that? Oh, Jones? shout out to Jared. Yeah. Jared. Yeah, Jared, oh, oh, Jared Monjo, yeah. Jared yep. Monjo who's okay. uh, playing the third role um, of uh, Mr. and Ossifer. It's kind of a split character. Almost like a surreal angel of death in some ways, kind of strange. In a manner of speaking, right. yes. <laughs> he could be interpreted in yeah. a number of ways, yeah. And yeah. so with the play itself, uh, how did you guys come about this play? Was the play already in place, or were you thinking about the gentlemen who were the actors first and you kind of figured it out? Like, how was it reverse engineered? Yeah. No, that's a good question. So we, um, we were initially, um, this festival has been in the works for a year, um, and I knew that I wanted to work uh, with our, our director for this show, Barry Robinson, who's a good friend of mine. Um, and we actually started looking at a couple of different plays before this, and we actually auditioned both Ashanti and Jay. I had known Jay, as Jay said, for almost a couple of years now, but I had never met Ashanti. But we auditioned Jay and Ashanti for this other show that we thought we were going to do. And then we kind of pulled that idea at the last minute. But we knew that Jay and Ashanti were available. And both Barry and I had been looking at Passover for a long time. Like, this show originated at the Steppenwolf Theater in Chicago. Yeah. It transferred to Broadway. It was the first play back on Broadway after the pandemic. Um, it was nominated for Best New Play for, for a Tony Award. And it just... It's a really magical piece that we thought, well, if we can get the rights to do this, we've got the two guys that could do it. They're here right now. Right. Let's go for it. And honestly, our little festival, which you know is in its first year of business, we didn't expect to be given professional rights to do this play. But right. um, we made a strong case for it, and um, and we 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 made our you know put in our application. We got the rights, and that was that. And so. Mm. Um, also, selfishly, I was going to be in this play with these guys. Ah, and I then see. I ended up getting another job, a uh, TV job that's kind of pulled me away from Portland part-time now this summer down to New York. But that was another thing, too, where it was like, I was thinking selfishly, like, how can I work with these two guys right. this summer on something that I really love? <laughs> it makes sense. Um, but then when I got that part, we found Jared, who I said the other night after the opening, like, in a way, I almost feel as though Jared was always destined to play that role. Right, right, like, right. I exactly. think Jared does some stuff in that play that, frankly, I couldn't do. You wouldn't so, have done, right. But that's how those things work out. So, I mean, I, yeah, these guys were kind of game to work on whichever, because we had a few projects in the works, and all those scripts, you guys were like, yes, yes, yes. And then when we came on this one, it was... Well, you guys can speak about well, it. coming to the script. Black black plays are very hard to find in the New England area, let alone Maine itself specifically, right. let alone Portland more specifically. Uh, I've been, you know, looking for stuff to really, you know, dig my teeth in, nails, et cetera, in. Yeah. And this play was perfect. White Noise, which is another great play, is out there also, and that's something that I hopefully will have the opportunity to do in the future also, along with all these other plays that we just do not do here. I hope this... Um, play, if anything, helps other theater companies, you know, around this area go, oh, so we can do plays like this that have, like, really good sociopolitical, you know, um, metaphors, ideals, et cetera, and just put it out there, and we can also make a profit out of it, but also, you know, gain, engage with our audience and go, hey, you know, uh, let's talk about this play, which is what we're going to do on Thursday. This Thursday, we're having a discussion about it, and I hope that it just helps to generate more plays like this where we can have more discussions about. 
you know, things like that. And so, so yeah. as, as the plays are usually Friday nights and Saturday nights and Sunday earlier, but you'll be doing the play, it's also Thursday nights every week? Thursday through Sunday. Yeah. Thursday through Sunday. And so after the Thursday night play or before, there'll after. be a discussion? After. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is that that's something that's open to the public? A lot of, you know, folks can get go to that? Yeah, or? anybody who comes that night can, can talk just about. stay and there's yep. a talk back. It'll be moderated by... Um, a uh, person here named Maya Williams, who's actually uh, Portland's poet laureate. So, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. Interesting, uh, right. interesting person with hands in a lot of different arenas in Portland's cultural sphere. So mm -hmm. we're happy to have them as our as our moderator. And so, Jay, uh, you went to Syracuse, or you're from New Jersey. You guys didn't know each other in New Jersey, no. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> uh, so you were in Syracuse. Did, were you doing plays when you were younger, or you went yeah, to Yeah, yeah. I, I started um, acting when I was in middle school, and, like, it was just, like, you know, like a, one of those things, like, you do, like, after school, and then, like, you know, you, like, ended up, like, doing it, and then I did all the plays through high school. And then towards the, uh, my end of my like my junior years when like you know you start looking at colleges and stuff like that my director came up to me and he was like you know like you can you could do this like professionally and I was like really and he was like yeah man like you I think you might have like the chops for it like you know if, if you wanted to try it and like I thought about it and I was like I'm not really passionate enough about anything else that's like pulling me you know one way or another besides just this like I, I love this I, I love getting a new script I love I love acting I love being on stage I love performing I love everything about it um, so I was like, yeah, I'm game, let's do it. And so I, he helped me with my audition materials and I started auditioning for different colleges. Um, ended up picking Syracuse because it kind of like had everything I wanted in a college and a program. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, so been acting for a, a little bit now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so like, let's talk about what goes into the preparation for something like this. This is a lot of, a lot of uh, memorization, a lot of work. I mean, it's mostly you guys. Again, Jared, I agree with you in the sense that he brought a very kind of strange character to it, uh, kind of hard to even really figure out after watching it, you know, exactly what his story was. Uh, but, you know, how long was the preparation for this? Have you guys been working on this for couple of months or how does how do you go about the craft of it? Uh, when we start rehearsal the beginning of July, July. and I think we, we had, had the four script, weeks we had the script before that for maybe a month something yeah, like that yeah. so a lot of the stuff we did at home yeah you know a lot of research we did we took and we just looked at and you know through our schooling we you know um, just generated these beautiful people and it just happens that Jay and Jared and myself we and Barry beautiful beautiful director um, black director, he um, mm -hmm. just put it all together and we automatically had this trust with each other. We all, this chemistry is just, it's like being part of a band, so to speak, because, I mean, the the words, I was going to say lyrics, but the words of the play, it just, it takes you and then all of a sudden you're improvising with this gentleman right here, then officer or mister comes in later on, then it becomes something totally different. So we did a lot of preparation at work thinking, of, you know, who are these actors? Why do we, why are characters beg your pardon? Why are we bringing them out here? Like, who do they represent? Why is this so necessary right now, you know? And then through the work, you, you find it out, and then you just bring who you are. It's playtime, basically. We're in the sandbox, and oh, hey, Jay, hey, we're gonna do this part, and hey, <laughs> hey, Jared, you know? And, you know, Barry just put it all together for us, so that was, my preparation, long story short, is just, you know, just having fun with it and just taking my training and doing a lot home and just just putting it into work every rehearsal. Let's talk a little bit more about the overall uh, view of the of the festival. I mean, is yeah. there a thread to all of these plays? I mean, um, well, interestingly enough, the the thread between these three plays um, this year seems to be, and it's probably not a coincidence because it's stuff that I'm interested in as a person, as the artistic director, I probably have a bias towards the kind of shows that I'm drawn to, but all three shows are in some way or another examining um, masculinity and it, the ways in which it functions in society. And so, you know, the, 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 when it works and when it doesn't right. and why it doesn't when it doesn't and alternative narratives to the dominant narrative of masculinity um, and that's just stuff that I guess I've been interested in as a person and as an artist, you know, looking around at the violence of the world and not being able to not notice that most of it is perpetrated by men and wondering <laughs> what is yeah. up yeah. with this? What is up with guys and why can't we figure this out? And interestingly enough, the three shows, one 
two, both two are written by women, and the third is written by a transgender man. And so these perspectives on masculinity, which are so spot on, mm -hmm. are actually mm -hmm. you know, coming from these unique right. voices. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, non-dominant masculine voices, let's say, in, in cultural terms. And so that's been really interesting to me. But I think in general, the, the, the festival itself is sort of the goal of this festival, you know, um, if you're if you're a creator, I, I believe there's a responsibility as a as a creator of theater in 2022 to respond to the calls for action and change towards deeper representation, greater diversity in the arts. You can't just start something new and perpetuate old forms. You have to you have to meet the moment that you're in, and it's just impossible to live in a city where people like Jay and Ashanti are here, living here too and not do a play like Passover. You right. know what I mean? So we're trying with Pony, with Body Awareness, with, with, um, with Passover, you know, and in our future, should we continue, which I, you know, with any luck we will, yeah. um, you know, to push forward, um, to push forward and elevate stories that have gone for too long, kind of unheard and in the shadows. And, um, and to choose shows that are very different. And, and you have that unique opportunity when you do three in a season to really span a broad spectrum. You, right. don't, you don't have to just stay in one lane. And we're certainly not staying in one lane. It's like right. body awareness could not be <laughs> further so from good. Passover. <laughs> and Pony could not be right. further from, from, from body awareness and Passover. So, mm -hmm. And that's a wonderful thing, you know, because A, you get to you get to put up a lot of different artists towards making those projects happen, and B, you get to draw in a very wide ranging audience, a lot of people who have never seen theater before because maybe they didn't see its relevance in their life, or people who you know, I was like, oh wow, this is actually something that that speaks to me, versus like you know some old dusty play that you know doesn't mean anything anymore doesn't mean as much anymore and so you know theater when it's at its best can can and should entertain and provoke you know in the best possible ways well so let's talk about also the one coming up because i don't know if we'll have an opportunity but hopefully we will to to bring you back with the guys from pony yeah and and women whoever's in it yeah uh but what's what what should we know about that a little bit as well yeah so pony is um best way to explain pony is uh pony sort of centers on a a, a trans guy who's recently paroled out of prison trying to start a new life in a small town community, not unlike maybe some small towns that you would find here in and around Portland. And he very quickly gets kind of embroiled in the small town drama, mm -hmm. falls, for, falls for a girl named Marie, um, and they connect, though it seems like maybe Marie has another agenda, and Pony's spent their life struggling to trust people, you know, and is coming to terms with their own identity in the process and meeting other people who are doing the same thing. So it's a real seminal work of trans theater um, and it's directed by one of my really good friends, Jess Barba Gallo, who I was in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child with in New York for two years, um, who along with Sylvan, the writer, Sylvan Oswald, are two kind of key instrumental um, voices in trans and queer art around the country. Um, and Sylvan teaches playwriting at UCLA and Jess teaches at NYU and they're both very entrenched in, in the theater world. Um, so it's just like a real honor to be given the rights to be able to do this play here in Portland, tap into Portland's queer community, which is vibrant and robust and like Passover stars uh, an entirely local cast. You know, it took us a while to find people who, you know, Pony calls for. Pony is a story of, you know, shifting gender norms and, right. and, um, and very sort of, of of our current moment. And we really went the length to find people who identified as their characters. And we were able to do that. Um, and so we're really happy about that and happy to bring that show. Again, another, you know, another side of the representation spectrum that 
just in Portland for whatever reason, um, doesn't get a lot of play. And so we're happy to be able to to do a show that you know elevates these voices. And isn't that one taking place? Because these the plays currently right now and before are at the Mayo Street Arts Theater. Yeah. It's a very small uh, kind of like it looked like maybe it was a church or something before. Yeah, it's an old church, been around for over a hundred years yeah. in East Bayside. Yeah, Mayo Street Arts, Ten Mayo Street. Ten Mayo Street. Yeah, make sure to to find that. Uh, but the, this one, I think you're saying part of it takes place or all of it takes place at Mechanics Hall, is that correct, somewhere yes. else? Yep, yeah. we're actually leaving, this. Our, our third show is, uh, is uh, at Mechanics Hall on Congress Street, across the street, directly across the street from this studio, in fact. Right, right. Um, up in their grand ballroom, which if you've never been to that space before, it's like truly one of the great architectural relics of Portland. It's an old Union meeting house. It's where the shipwrights used to, and sailors and Fishing people used to hang out and eat right before they would like go out to right. sea for months at a time. And it's this giant open ballroom, beautiful refinished hardwood floors. And we're manipulating the space for our purposes, but working with the folks over there, Mechanics Hall is co-presenting the project too. And so we're That's cool. pretty excited. It kind of leans into the festival aspect of having multiple venues for these plays. You know, it's not just at one place, but kind of utilize as much of the city as possible in, in our efforts. Yeah, it seems very collaborative. I think you guys have, we have a lot of partners in the art world, different foundations helping you guys. That, you want to give any shout out to any of those? Yeah, guys? I should definitely thank my, my fiscal sponsor, Creative Portland, um, and their executive director, uh, Dinah Minot, uh, the Onion Foundation, and then we, we've we actually been able to, we've got a lot of support from the small business community. So. You know, we've got generous fiscal spon or financial sponsorships from, you know, Coffee by Design, uh, Tandem Coffee Roasters, mm -hmm. Oxbow Brewing, Gorham Savings Bank, Maine and Loire Wine, the Press and Canopy Hotels, and the folks at Fathom Companies, and those are just to name a few. So we're we've been we've been we've been fortunate in that regard to have other people vouching for us and literally putting funds in our pockets to make these plays happen. And they're putting their money where their mouth is, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're actually, you know, <laughs> behind this as a local festival. So, like, what's going to be upcoming for you guys? Like, this is, this is you know, really, you know, solidly, solidly on your plate now. Right. But, like, what are you guys thinking about down the road? Or do you want to do more plays here? Or maybe try to some other things? Or writing anything on your own? Or? Yeah, I have a couple of writing projects that I'm working on. Nothing I really want to put out there right now in the universe. Because right, right, right. uh, I jinx myself all the time. I'll put it out there. Then I'll stop doing it. Then you stop doing it. Exactly. <laughs> it's just me. Well, so. I mean, it's and, and uh, is there different as actors? Like, is there acting groups? Are there ways to stay fresh and and have, you know, your own things? I mean, I know that that's been a problem for Maine. Is that it's just, it's like there's just not enough things happening. Yeah. And this is what we talked about before. And I, I think while we have a minute or two, we can always just touch on it. Is uh, you know I know you're working with Picture Maine a little bit now. I had mm -hmm. Eric Van Wick on my show, mm -hmm. uh, and and we're trying to get the films, you know, tax credits here so we can get more films playing here. Uh, just actually doing more films here is that something that you guys would be a proponent of? Or oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, <laughs> what? Right. I definitely love yeah. that. Yeah, I'm no. sure. Yeah. Right, right, right. No, no I don't want to work. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. but uh, from being in New Jersey, I mean, you must have seen that probably movies uh, being shot there all the time. Oh, absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in my town, the town surrounding, yeah, absolutely. And you go out there as an actor to be like, hey, can I just walk in? Do you need help in the background? Whatever it takes, you yeah. know? So yeah, absolutely. We could spoil, well, I got spoiled between New York and New Jersey because that's all there was. Right. Right. You know, so to come up here and be like, whoa, Maine's beautiful. Why aren't they doing yeah. stuff up here? This is a big loss. Right. You know, and hopefully, you know, uh, people get their, you know, acts together and go, oh, yeah, this is actually a wonderful place to shoot. And right. for people to take advantage of, it's not just in Oklahoma or Atlanta or right. L.A. or, you know, the tri-state area. You know, it's here, too, up in New England where... Look at all this, you know. Well, and and it's really the, as because uh, you work in New York currently sometimes as an actor. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So what it is, it, and it's the locations are all right here. It's all because Augusta, and they don't want to give this tax credits. So even Stephen King can't get movies yeah. made here. I mean, the last movie that yeah. was made here with a big budget, Message in the Bottle with Kevin Costner in the '90s. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, Nobody's Fool with Paul Newman for HBO wow. in the 90s. Yeah. So it's been a long time because uh, Canada took over a lot of it, and it looks kind of like Maine. Or you could go to New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, Massachusetts period, you know, right. Boston. Yeah. Same landscape or similar landscape, much better tax credit, which, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And it's hard to convince people who, you know, it's hard to convince people of the, it is a delayed gratification scenario. You know, right. you, you take the hit as the state up front, knowing or trusting rather that this money returns tenfold, twentyfold in time, but it doesn't just happen overnight. It takes years. Um, but you, what you're doing by by bringing this business here is is necessitating more infrastructure. So you're exactly. necessitating more jobs, right. more economy, more lodging, more food. Um, as a result, more peripheral entertainment. You know, it's good for the hotels, it's good for restaurants, it's good for the culture in general, just to have people here putting creative energies into the state. And that money, I mean, the numbers in states that have these high incentives speak for themselves, right. without right. exception. So we should look for the next season as well, and that's gonna be next summer, you think? Yeah, I think we're gonna roll with this July through Labor Day model. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we're learning a lot in this first year about audience behavior and when people come and see shows and what are the ideal conditions under which somebody would come and see a show. So I'm thinking already next year about potentially having one of the shows be outside at an outdoor venue and kind of creating a, an experience around that. So you get people outside enjoying the summer, you know, serve some food and drinks there maybe and just kind of turn it into a, a sort of a more obvious summer thing. Right. Um, but it's really contingent on the play. You can't just do any play outside. It has to be a play that ideally takes place outside. Takes place and, outside, um, right, and, right. And, um, and can be in a contained environment that you could actually produce it in. Not too many variables that you can't foresee because you don't want that. Um, but you know what's fun about this is that there's really kind of an endless, the options are endless for where this could go. And I just hope that the more this catches on, um, the more support we'll get from the community the more talent will want to be around in the summer and stay in Portland and want to work on these shows. And, um, and we just grow it from there. Yeah. 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 Sounds exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Watch them coming up. Uh, it's going to be, again, just give them the, the, where they can find the tickets at again. Yeah. So tickets can be purchased at uh, www.portlandtheaterfestival.org. .org. And we'll put that on the little ticker the down little below ticker, so exactly. you can see. But yeah, this show runs, past, please come and see Passover. It runs for two more weeks. Um, and it's a show that just should not be missed. It's, yeah. I saw it, it was excellent. I recommend you go check it out. This is Friday night. You can see it tomorrow night. You can see it Sunday or the next Thursday through Sunday. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank Thanks you. Yeah. Appreciate Take care. Yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye.